back, the world was happy to call China its workshop, the global manufacturing capital. Not anymore. The over-dependence on China cost the world dearly. Since the year 2009, China has been the world's largest exporter of goods. In 2020, China exported a deadly virus. And that could well be its undoing. We are living in the times of social distancing. Perhaps it's also time to practice economic distancing from China. Two countries are already working on it, the United States and Japan. Both are badly hit by the coronavirus and they're learning their lessons and they're taking steps to bring their businesses back home. Japan is taking the lead. On Tuesday, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe unveiled Japan's largest ever economic stimulus package. It's worth a whopping $990 billion, $990 billion. First, listen to this. The Japanese economy is facing the biggest crisis after the war. Under a strong sense of crisis, we will definitely save lives and jobs. In order to do this, we will implement a world-class economic stimulus package worth 108 trillion yen, which is equivalent to 20% of the GDP. 20% of their GDP, he calls it a world-class relief package. And it has a clear message for China, this package. It has a unique allocation. Japan wants to keep its businesses safe and for that, Japan is ready to pay its companies to shift out of China. Japan will incentivize them to move their factories out of China. A little more than $2 billion has been set aside for this. That's the kind of money that the Japanese government will give companies to leave China and return to Japan. Another $215 million will be made available to those who want to move to other countries. The message is very clear. Go anywhere but leave China. And this has caught Beijing off guard. China's foreign ministry was asked about Japan's moves yesterday and they gave a rather vague response. Go. We also hope that countries in the world will take corresponding measures like China did to ensure that the world economy and the supply chain are affected as little as possible. Big expression of hope. We all live in hope, I say. What about the United States? The exodus of American companies had already begun. The virus has only accelerated it. Thanks to U.S. President Donald Trump's America First agenda, U.S. companies were being forced to rework their supply chains. The trade war had forced them to ditch China. Last year, more than 50 American companies had reportedly exited China. And now they're projected to leave at a much faster rate. A report by consulting, consulting firm Kearney claims that companies are, are rethinking their approach towards China. Now they want to diversify their sourcing and supply because they can no longer depend just on China. The coronavirus outbreak has snapped the global supply chains. A fragile and imbalanced system that broke when China shut down all the factories. Now half of the Earth's population is under a lockdown. More than 4 billion people, that is, companies that could not get their supplies earlier now cannot sell what they have because stores have been shut. The losses are mounting. The coronavirus outbreak is a black swan moment for the world. It is forcing countries and businesses to rethink their approach. Japan and the United States are showing the way the world must create alternatives to China. The question now is, who stands to gain from the shift? Which country or countries have the potential to become the global export hubs? If not China, then who? A group of five countries known as the Mighty Five could benefit from withdrawals from China. And India is one of them. India can offer manpower at the same scale as China. The trade war benefited some of these emerging markets. They will be fighting for new contracts after the global lockdown ends. The second one on this list of the Mighty Five is Vietnam. Before the coronavirus crisis, Vietnam was exporting around 5,000 products to the United States. Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia also stand to gain, again, the same selling points, cheaper raw material and labour. It is time for the world to seriously explore these options. We talk about making China pay. This is one very good way to do it.